Are you looking to move to Freehold, New Jersey, but you're not exactly sure if it's the right town for you? Well, good news is I got you covered. And today we're going over the top six things you need to know before moving to Freehold. If this is your first time to the channel, my name is Steve McCutcheon, and I'm a realtor at Berkshire Hathaway. On the Live in Central New Jersey channel, we cover everything related to the Central Jersey real estate market. So if you want to be the first ones to know what's going on in either Monmouth or Ocean County real estate, feel free to click the bell, hit the subscribe button. Let's get this video started. First thing we want to cover is going to be the location of Freehold. So as you can see from the photo popping up, Freehold is located in that southern portion, maybe a little southwest of Monmouth County. It has a couple major roadways that also go through it. So you're going to have Route 18 and Route 9 that both go north to south, and then you're going to have Route 537 and Route 33 that go east to west. None of these are going to be toll roads. They're all open. They're all free. Um, Route 9, if you're going north to south, there are going to be a few more lights on that versus where Route 18 is. That section is going to be, uh, there's going to be no lights on it until you hit a little bit more northern into Old Bridge. So if you live on the east side of Freehold, you're probably going to use Route 18 more. If you're going north to south and if you're using uh, Route 9, you're probably going to be on the more central location like Freehold uh, Borough or the west side of Freehold and you're going to be using Route 9. Route 537 and Route 33 pretty much run throughout a little bit of Freehold. So realistically, depending on where you're at, you're probably going to use either one of them. Freehold is actually a pretty big town in Monmouth County. It ranks fourth out of the 53 municipalities in terms of size, and it comes in at just under 39 square miles. If you want to get to the shore, there's quite a few different options and towns you can go to, including Belmar, Asbury, uh, Spring Lake, just to kind of name a few of them real fast. But if you live on the east side of Freehold, you're probably looking more about the 20 minutes. If you live on the farther west side towards Jackson, you're probably looking at more like a half an hour. If you want to get to an airport, you're going on vacation or a trip, you have a couple different options there too, three, three of the main ones. First one, if you go up north to Newark, that's gonna roughly run you about 45-ish minutes, maybe 50, give or take. You can go out west into Pennsylvania for Philadelphia Airport. That's another a big one, just like Newark Asia, you'll find international flights there too, and that's roughly about an hour or so. The last one's gonna be a much smaller airport that's going to be down in Atlantic City in about like an hour and 15 minutes. Again, just having all three of those is really nice though, because if you need a specific airline or flight time, you have a couple different options to go to. Last thing I wanna check off with Freehold is you have Freehold Township and Freehold Borough. So Freehold Township actually completely surrounds Freehold Borough. If you kinda of remember from that photo I showed earlier, and they are separate municipalities, but they do share the same zip code 07728. But we'll cover a little bit of them both kind of throughout this video. Just wanted to give you a little bit of heads up on that. Coming in at point number two is going to be your commute to work. Living in Freehold, you have the best of both worlds here. You're basically in between Freehold, or uh, not Freehold, you're basically in between New York City and Philadelphia, about an hour and a half at the most, pretty much from both of them. So just uh, going with New York City first, your best two options are gonna be driving yourself or taking the bus. You technically could take the train, although there's no, there is no train in Freehold, you could drive to another station. If you're just driving north up to, let's just say South Amboy, you're basically passing that train station anyway. So if you want to hop out of your car and go onto the train for the last, you know, 45 minutes to hour of your commute, you can do so. It's if you really wanna do that or not, it's up to you, but that would run you about like an hour train ride, half hour drive up there, so about the same time frame. If you're driving yourself, you'll take Route 9 up to the Garden State Parkway or Turnpike, and from there, kind of make your route uh, as you go there. The Garden State Parkway and Turnpike are going to be your major toll roads in New Jersey. Those are two biggest highways. If you live on the eastern side of Freehold, you're going to take uh, Route 18 up to the Garden State Parkway or Turnpike, so either way, you have to hop onto one of those two major highways. If you want to take the bus, the biggest uh, bus route, they have quite a few up and down Route 9, but the biggest park and ride one is going to be over in the Freehold Raceway Mall. This is going to be located on like, the western side of Freehold and kind of bordering with Manalpin, so it's right over there. Freehold Borough is not too far away from it either. The bus is going to take you about an hour and a half as well, so there's really... All three options are going to be about the same time frame. The bus has a few more stops along the way until it hits, I think, about like that several point, and then from there it's an express. But really can't go wrong with either direction there. If you're looking to commute to Philadelphia a little bit differently here, there really is no good bus or train route, so you're going to have to drive yourself. Uh, the best way to do it is if you're living on the west side of Freehold, you probably hop onto Route 195, take that out to the Turnpike, and then go from there. You could also go on Route 33 and kind of go the same route in. If you live on the east side of Freehold, you realistically have to just cross all the way, uh, all the way through 537. This can be a little bit of a hassle, or you have to hop on Route 33. The reason 537 is a hassle is because you don't have to go through the borough. Uh, in there, it's a it's a older area that main street portion right there it's only gonna be a 25 mile per hour zone a couple lights and it can get backed up pretty heavily so if you're on the east side of freehold recommend trying to find a way onto like route 33 and taking that all the way out to the jersey turnpike that's going to be about like an hour and a half too just like new york city is so again really can't go wrong either direction Coming in at point number three is going to be school system and education in Freehold. This is a big reason why we see a lot of young families move to the area. And for Freehold, you're going to have three different school districts. It sounds a little confusing, but I'll break it down for you. You have Freehold Township School District, 
Freehold Borough School District and the Freehold Regional High School District. So Freehold Township School District is gonna be made up of the K through eight population. So they have five elementary and two middle schools. They house roughly 3,500 students and have a student teacher ratio of 11 to one. According to niche.com, it's also rated to B plus and all of their schools between uh, elementary and middle school are rated B plus as well. Heading over to the Freehold Borough School District, niche.com has them rated as a C plus. They have 1,600 students roughly, give or take, a 14 to one student teacher ratio. There are two elementary and one middle school. Now onto the high schools. Both Freehold Township and Freehold Borough are gonna be part of the Freehold Regional High School District and both are also rated in A minus according to niche.com. Being within this district, there are six public high schools, Freehold Township and Borough, Manalpin, Marlboro, Colesneck, and Howell. The cool part is they have something called the magnet program. So each school is going to specialize in a specific study. So for instance, Marlboro is going to be business administration, Manalpin has the LEPS program, this is going to be police and EMS. Um, but your child, when they're in eighth grade, can apply to any of the schools within the district to get into that program. So mainly, it, a lot of parents enjoy this, but it's also for the kids that if they have a specific study that uh, in mind for a career path, again, like I just mentioned, like business administration for Marlboro, they can get a taste of what it's really like. If accepted into this program, they will be bused there. They go take all their classes in that high school. If they were to ever drop out, they are reverted back to uh, whichever high school they are districted to though. So it's really cool. Again, a lot of parents like it and it's really helpful for the kids. Point number four is going to be different housing options. I like to break it down to condos, townhomes, uh, in one section, you have adult communities and then single families. So for the condos and townhomes, they're gonna range in freehold from anywhere between, I'd say about like 190, 200,000, all the way up to about 500,000. So that's pretty much like your bulk of sales. The most desirable development typically is Raintree. So it's a gated community located in the western side of freehold. It's pretty much off of 537 and Route 33. It's basically smack dab in the middle of both of them. There's so many different, I think there's over like 1,100, 1,200 units over there. Um, they do have some single family mixed in as well. But the constant townhomes are gonna range between about 200, I would say, no, I'm sorry, 300 to about up to all the way up to 500. Most of them will be about two bed, two bath, or some variation of that. You have upper and lower level units. There are uh, different square footage for some of them. So just kind of have to see what you might like and all that. But yeah, it's a good community. Uh, they have a clubhouse, pool, golf course, a bunch of other things too. When it comes to the adult communities, you have a wide range of purchase prices. So they have one community that's called Silvermead. That's going to be a mobile home park for adult community. Uh, they're gonna range anywhere between like 75,000 and up to like 175, somewhere in that range. They're usually all cash purchases. I don't think they approve uh, mortgages over there. So just be aware of that. If you wanna go into like a mid tier, you have Surrey Downs. That's going to be on like the border of Freehold and Howell. That's probably between like 300 to 500, somewhere in that ballpark range. And then they have last but not least a higher tier one uh, model. So Toll Brothers is coming in and doing some new development over on Route 9 and they have a massive uh, complex built out and they're going in like the, you know, 700, $800,000 range. So kind of a weird one for an adult community. You're not really downsizing for per se, especially like price point wise. So I don't know exactly where the market is for that, but they're filling up pretty quickly and people are wanting them. So it's in a really good location off of Route 9. They have a new complex across the street from there with a Wawa and another strip mall. So it's it's not a bad spot definitely at all. And uh, yeah, so adult communities, you have everything from low tier, mid tier and high tier for uh, price points. When it comes to single family homes in Freehold, you have a couple different routes and options that you can go. So first off, like I mentioned earlier in the video, Raintree is in that HOA. You do have a, sing, a kind of a section for the single family homes in there. You will be a part of the association still, so you will have that monthly HOA fee, but you won't, your home won't be attached to another dwelling. If you wanna move out of there and get into a regular single, a regular single family development, the minimum price for like a moving ready home in Freehold, you're probably looking in between about like six and $650,000. It's not the cheapest place to live between home prices and taxes specifically, but that's what you're pretty much looking at. Again, good school system, good district, good area. Uh, it's just, that's just pretty much what's gonna run you. The houses can go all the way, go all the way up until like the multi-million dollar range. I know there's a development off of 537 and like right past the hospital called Clayton Farms. That's gonna be about like 1.5 to 1.7 million over there. So. Um, large range in freehold it's really going to depend on what you want you know how close you want to be to the schools all that kind of stuff point number five is going to be different shop shopping and dining options throughout freehold so up and down route 9 and 537 are going to be your main ones you have uh, different food stores on 537 like lavodi's stop and shop uh you got sam's club over there as well if you want to go a little bit more bulk on route 9 you'll have Shoprite and aldi when it comes to just shopping in general, on Route 9, you'll have Burlington, uh, different strip malls up and down Route 537. But most importantly, you'll have the Free Freehold Raceway Mall. This is going to be a two-story mall. It's absolutely massive in there. I think there's over 200 stores when they're at full capacity. Some of the department stores did close down after COVID, so there might be a few less ones or a few less than normal, but they still have something like Primark out there. I think JCPenney's or Macy's is another one. 
Um, and the list goes on and on. They have an Apple store inside. Definitely recommend making an appointment before you go into that. Not, they don't really take too many walk-ins. Um, outside the mall, they have Dick's Sporting Goods, Home Depot, there's a movie theater. The list goes on and on. It's absolutely massive complex over there. Highly recommend checking them out. The dining options are just as plentiful and awesome as the shopping options in Freeland. So if you want to head over to like a really get a really good burger, for instance, you can go to Moore's Tavern. That's going to be located off of 537 in Stillwell's Corner, pretty much right on the corner. And they do burger nights on Tuesdays. So it's going to be two for one burgers. It's in-house only. Would recommend getting there around like at 5, 530, just to kind of beat the dinner rush a little bit. So you're in and out of there a lot faster and they're not doing as many all, all at once. If you go a little past six o'clock, you're definitely going to be waiting for a table for a little while. If you want to head over to Tommy's Tap and Tavern, that's going to be on Route 9. A little bit more of an expanded menu than Moore's. and has a little, more of a younger demographic and crowd, in my opinion, at least. Uh, Thursdays do live music over there. I think the same thing on Fridays as well. It can be a little loud, though. So if you want to have like a conversation with like your friends, family, a little bit more intimate, I probably wouldn't go to Tommy's. It can get kind of, uh, like I said, just loud in there. The music's bumping a little bit. So maybe like Moore's would be a better destination for that, or even next door to Moore's is Escondido's, uh, which is like a me Mexican restaurant. Really, really good, too. If you want to head into the borough, they have some outdoor eating options. They also have a really good steakhouse that popped up in the last couple of years. That's going to be charcoal. It's a little pricey, but really good steak. Highly recommend checking them out too. Last but not least, point number six is going to be the different entertainment options in Freehold. So kicking us off with like kind of more family environment with the uh, kids involved, you're gonna have iPlay America. This is going to be located off of Shank Road and Route 9, pretty close to the police station and like the western side of Freehold, basically. You have everything from indoor laser tag to amusement rides. Uh, they also have a couple different like, like a games and arcade sections. So air hockey, uh, you shoot basketball hoops, you have the claw game. You can have kids' birthday parties there. It's a, it's a pretty big hit for around town. On the other side, you're gonna have the golf simulator, so that's gonna be for more for the adults. Maybe put the kids into one section and go hang out in the other. Um, they do have some beverages there that you can get uh, a bar. They have a bar inside there, then also next door to the, the top golf simulator is going to be a bar and restaurant as well. So pretty much everything they put on the UFC fights and boxing events there too. And then on one more side of that, it pretty much takes up this entire strip mall. Uh, they have an event and conference uh, center as well, so they, they host different events there. Then you can head over down to Jackson. They have Six Flags Great Adventure. Highly recommend if you're gonna go more than one time per year, get the season pass, you'll save some money there. But you have access to the theme park over there with the rides and the games. You have the water park and the safari. So supposedly the safari is also doing something called glamping. And you'll be able, it's basically almost like an Airbnb in the safari. So they're building up different locations to stay there overnight. I don't have all the exact details and prices on it just yet, but it sounds like kind of like a more luxury experience in, in, in nature. So it seems pretty cool. We'll have to check it out eventually. And then last but not least, also in Friel, there's going to be the Mammoth Racetrack. So you can go there, bet on some horses, and they put some, and that's going to be off of Route 9, basically like the more northern part of Freehold. So it's a pretty good spot. And if you're done with the racetrack, head over to Jersey Freeze, get some ice cream. It's one of the better ones in the county, definitely. Thanks so much for sticking around to the end of the video, guys. I really do appreciate it. And hopefully you gained a little bit more value and insight on what it's like to live in Freehold and just maybe the surrounding area in general. If you're looking to move to Freehold, feel free to reach out. All my contact information is down below in the comments and description. Whether you're one month, three months, six months, even a year out, it doesn't matter to me. Let's just get you on the right path towards your real estate goals. And if you're looking to move to a different part of the Central Jersey area, stick around, check out the two videos popping up here, and hopefully they help you out a little bit too. Have a great day.